If you have used Excel for computing standard deviation or variance, you must have realized that there are multiple formulas in Excel for computing variance and standard deviation. So which one is the right formula to use? And that's exactly what I'm going to talk about in the next few minutes. Before we get going, I just want to take a minute to talk about an important concept which is applicable uh, if you want to identify the right formula. Population and sample. All of us know what is the difference between population and sample. Uh, it's actually a no-brainer. If, for example, I want to compute the penetration of um, internet in Africa, for example, or mobile internet in Africa, then the population is the whole of the country, right? Uh, and if I want to pick samples out of that and find out uh, the penetration level or do an estimation of the population's penetration instead of going and finding out each and every individual and whether he or she is using a mobile device with internet or without internet, uh, it's quite cumbersome, right? So you may want to do a sampling. And so when you want to do sampling, it's very important that uh, the sample is representative of the population and so for example you may want to slice and dice the data by various countries and make sure that you have representative population from every country in Africa. So that's the difference between population and uh, sample. Now a little bit about statistics. Uh, you would find that whenever you, we use the term population, we commonly also associate the word parameter with it. So if we wish to establish, let's say, the average penetration, then we would talk about, uh, for example, population parameter, which means that we're talking about the entire population's uh, characteristic. Right. And uh, when we're going to do a sampling, then we use the term estimate because we are estimating the population's characteristic or population parameter using a sample characteristic. And that's why commonly the term estimate is used for samples, but for the population, there's no estimation needed. We have the entire population parameter because the formula does it for us. Now, in statistics, particularly for standard deviation and for variance, what you see on the screen is variance, but just the square root of variance is the standard deviation. So it's uh, almost pretty much the same in terms of the formula, right? Uh, so it's easy for you to understand even if I write a variance on the screen. So the population variance has a n in the denominator where n here, the capital N stands for the entire population. And the mu that you see on the numerator is nothing but the population mean or the population average. Now if I want to estimate the population standard deviation or variance without really collecting the data of the entire population, then I can do sampling. And when I do sampling, I need to, of course, do a small correction in my formula. So you see the formula right at the bottom. You're using n minus 1 and you have a small n there. So that represents a sample and n minus 1 represents uh, a correction factor to make sure that we are actually estimating the population's characteristic and we are not computing merely the characteristic or the value for the sample alone, right? And that is why we are using n minus 1. Uh, you would also naturally see that we don't know what is the population mean. So we have to live with the sample mean and that's why you see an X bar. So X bar is commonly used as a notation for the sample mean. So now I think you understand the difference between what is population's uh, parameter, say variance, and what is sample variance. Why do you compute sample variance and how is it different from the population variance in terms of the formula? Now, why do I use n minus 1? If you are very curious about it, there is a clear scientific explanation. There is also an empirical uh, proof for that. And I have done a separate video which I've included right below in the link. And you can use that to understand why n minus 1 is used. Now, let's jump into Excel to understand the different formulas that Excel has. So, what are the different uh, uh, formula that you can use in Excel? Uh, for example, for computing the variance. So variance is represented by VAR and uh, you see that we have a VARP, a VARS, VARA, VARPA and we also have a VAR and a VARP, right? So we have quite a few uh, different ways to compute the variance and uh, same is the case with standard deviation which uses the formula stdev which is nothing but the square root of the variance formula itself and this also has various uh, different uh, uh, connotations or different formulas here we have a ps uh, 
we have a A, we have a PA and all that stuff, right? And you also see that the last two are, um, uh, the, the formula itself uh, is highlighted with an error symbol. It's not an error, it just uh, notates that these formulae uh, were originally part of the 2007 Excel and people who are still using 2007 can still uh, use these two formulas alone and they cannot do the other calculations uh, in their Excel. Okay, so in case you're using 2007 and you try to type and see what are the various formulas available, you will note that your Excel has only these two. So now we will understand uh, using some real data, how these values are different, which one should I be using? So let's start with uh, the S and P. Uh, obviously, as you would have understood, S stands for sample and P stands for population. And we also know that the difference in the formula between S and P, we just talked about it a few minutes ago. And uh, so if we do this formula, which is STDEV and uh, dot S, and then select the columns, then it would use uh, N minus one in the denominator and compute the standard deviation. And that is the value that you get here. When you use STDEV dot P, then it uses a formula in which there is only n in the denominator and not n minus 1. And so that becomes a population parameter. And that is why you see that you have a difference in the values between the two that you are computing. Now, when will I use each of this? I almost covered this a couple of minutes ago when I was talking about the two formulas, but just to reiterate because this is very important when you want to apply the concept. When you want to draw an estimation about the population parameter using a sample estimate, that is this data belongs to a sample of the entire population's data, but you want to draw conclusion about the entire population, then I would use this formula. When this itself is the population for me and there is nothing more beyond this, if the population is known and I have the data of the entire population, then I would stick to this. Now the third condition, when I am dealing with sample data, but I don't want to draw estimate about the population, but I want to know only the value of the samples variation, then I would simply stick to this formula and call this as the sample variation of the process, which will measure only the variation of that particular sample. So this you have to remember. Now, in addition to this, as we uh, talked about uh, earlier, there are a few other variants of the formula. We have distinctively at least three more variants. We have uh, A and we have a PA, right? And then of course, we also have what we have already done, which is a uh, S. So I'm going to talk about, we'll forget this PA for a minute now. We will take at least this stdev.s and stdeva and talk about the difference between the two, understand uh, how they are different from each other. And then we can always go back and uh, understand what is stdevpa. Okay, now let's uh, look at this data set. This is the data set that I have with me, right? And um, I have computed the standard deviation for the sample. Right, I've used the formula which has n minus one in the denominator. I've got some value which ends with double three. And I've done um, another formula here which has a A here instead of S. And for that also I'm getting the same value. Let's park this for a minute. Let's go to the next scenario, scenario two. In this scenario, same formula, but in this data here, instead of an empty cell, I have included a zero in this uh, computation. And you see that the values are different from what we got earlier. Instead of double three, we now have one four, uh, eight one four, but still the two values are same. Again, let's not draw inferences about it. Let's park this for a minute and then let's go to the third scenario. Now in this scenario, you see, I have a, a dash here and that's a text. So you normally will find that, you know, when you collect some data, there may be some missing data points such as this. You, sometimes you may have a zero, sometimes you may have a nil value, right? Especially finance data, extra transaction value and all. If you don't have anything, then they may mark that as a nil. So if your data contains a nil, what would uh, stdev.s do? 
that would assume that particular cell to have no value in it and it would compute the standard deviation. It would ignore this altogether and compute the standard deviation. That's what it would do. But what would STDEVA do? It would assume this text value which has maybe a nil value or, or even for example any other text written there. It would assume that value to be a zero and compute the standard deviation. And that is why here you see that these two values are same and these two values are same. So STDEVS would ignore this altogether but STDEVA would assume that value to be a zero and compute it. And I said you know when you are having finance data or any other data where you have nil values in it and uh, you may want to assume those nil values to be zero. For example a particular account or a client has not done a transaction with you right. Uh, do you want to notate that as a zero or do you want to ignore it altogether? It's a call you have to take. If you want to ignore that, then you can use stdev.s. But if you want to uh, keep that customer and say that he has not done any business with you and so I want to call it as a zero, then that's fine. In that case, you don't need to go and replace all this hyphens with a zero. You can just use this formula and you will still get the standard deviation. Now we will go to the fourth scenario. In this scenario you see I have included uh, a logical uh, output which is a false and if I use a false then you would see that again for a false it assumes that value to be zero and computes the standard deviation but our STDEVS does not consider this value at all and it assumes that this cell is empty so it ignores uh, numeric or text cells altogether and computes the standard deviation. But this one would include this and keep that value as zero. But if you have a logical output which is true then a formula will assume that to be one that value to be one instead of zero here and it would compute the standard deviation with a value one here right. So STDEVA would use one here and compute the standard deviation. Obviously that's an anomaly right because you look at this data set all these values are falling less than one and then you have a logical parameter here which outputs a true and our calculation takes it as a one so that's undesirable. So I would think that uh, this scenario at least using STDEVA uh, throws you out altogether in terms of your computation so this is grossly incorrect. But then where will I use it? Let's say I have a scenario like this which is a formula where I'm using some kind of a, a logical if statement etc and it's throwing out some uh, logical arguments and an output based on that. In such scenarios um, this one would give an error because it does not have any numeric field at all but this one would uh, compute assuming all the truths to be one and all the false to be zero and then it would compute the standard deviation. Now I can apply this when I'm doing a survey right. If people have responded to the survey with either a true or a false then I can still compute the standard deviation in that case as you would know that many times people report the, the variance in the case of a, of a survey. So this is very useful uh, if you want to uh, output something from a survey or uh, something like that right where you actually have numeric parameter and you want to compute the output. So those are the various different uh, ways or scenarios in which you can use stdev.s and stdev.a. So what does uh, stdev.pa mean? Here it uses n in the denominator but for the sample I know uh, you remember that it will use n minus 1. That's the only difference uh, but everything else it would remain same. So if I use stdev. sorry stdev.pa then it would uh, compute the standard deviation by assuming the denominator to be uh, n and not n minus 1 that as the formula and then it would compute it. All the other places the computation etc would continue to remain the same. So if you are using a PA then you would use uh, the scenario very similar to what you saw here STDEVA but for the population. But if you use S or P it would just be for the population or for the sample.